So it's been a little while since I did an Eagle Moss unboxing, but I've got quite a few to show you, and this is the first one. Now, I started, <laughs> had to laugh at this, I started typing in Google to figure out which episode this came from, and as soon as I started doing that, I immediately remembered what episode it came from. So it was a season six finale called Descent, and in light of relatively recent developments with, um, with Picard in season two, of course, it's quite relevant because this episode featured the return of Hugh, the, the Borg who they recovered and sort of individualised, if you like, the, I don't know what the appropriate word is, deborged a little bit, um, in the episode I, Borg, and then he, he then returned in this episode as, a, as an individual amongst other Borg who had been freed from the collective. But this was their ship, um, and it was this bizarrely huge ship, but it wasn't a Borg ship. It, um, I have no idea where it was supposed to have come from, because I don't think they actually covered that in the episode. There's no magazine with this, this, this is a, a slightly random pickup that I got. Um, of, and I've had a few of those of late, which is why I'm doing a few more videos. Uh, this is going to be the one, the one that I don't like, I think, in the sense that even before I got it out of the box, that feels very plasticky. Actually, no, 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 I, no, I take it, I take it back somewhat. Um, I think there's there is a little bit of metal, perhaps in the middle bit, but the outrigging elements feel very plasticky. Um, not really sure that the the detail is really as as nice as it as it often is with these. But it was a very, very big ship, so I guess we probably didn't get up that much up close detail because it was such a huge scale. I mean, it dwarfed the Enterprise D. The Enterprise D didn't really know um, what to do with it. But the weird thing about it in these episodes, I remember, was that its behaviour was decidedly odd. Because for such a sort of a huge behemoth of a ship, it, it mainly ran away. <laughs> it used them um, almost like a sort of... Um, a transwarp conduit. I'm not actually sure if they recalled that in the, sh in the episode, but effectively it was like a Borg transwarp conduit that it used to get away. But one interesting thing about this ship is that, as you can clearly see, it's very, very asymmetrical, I think it would be the right word. Um, most of the ships that we see in Trek are very, very sort of symmetrical. They have kind of what I, I think you term it bilateral symmetry. So one side, is, one half is the same as the other half. Um, there aren't many that, that break away from that as a concept. This one, of course, really did. And that's perfectly fine in space. As, I, as, I, as I've probably commented before now, space doesn't care if you're aerodynamic or not. It doesn't give a stuff. Nor does it care if you're particularly well balanced because you have you know, thrusters and that and all, all that sort of good stuff to, um, to compensate for that sort of issue. So... I have no problem at all with its actual overall design. Um, it was just that you just had something that had no clue where this small, relatively small band of Borg had managed to um, acquire this ship from. And one of the other things, and there's its, there's its base, um, Renegade Borg ship, there you go. So one of the strange things about the episode as well is that the these Borg, of course, who were led by Law, as it turned out, spoilers, um, were using sort of energy weapons as well. I, I noticed that in the description of the episode when I got to it, and I was thinking, yeah, that was quite unusual for the Borg, because oddly, they were very, very much hand-to-hand -hand, um, when we saw them in, in Best of Both Worlds and so on. So it was kind of interesting that they would be um, portrayed as using um, energy weapons in this particular episode. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, that's good. That's Bizarre. I'm just. <laughs> I'm, how is that supposed to? What? That is so bizarre. So its its stand is actually. I, I mean, I've put it in like that because I think that's what the way its stand is supposed to go in. But the actual ship fits side on. That's that's that can't be right. Surely I must. I can't have done that. There must be another way to orientate that because Eagle Moss ships are always front to back on the stand. So perhaps I'm perhaps I'm misinterpreting. No, I can't I can't put the stand in the other way around. That's weird. That's very, really odd, because the ship definitely doesn't fly like that. It, it it doesn't fly like that. It flies like this. That's that's properly bizarre. That is properly bizarre. Um, 
It's also the only one I can think of that's got a sort of a, a scoop to hold the um, the ship in the ship in place. Um, that is a really odd model. Am I getting that right? Was it? Was it? Did it fly that way round? Is it, should it go like? It's not going to help its orientation though. This is the only problem when you don't have the magazine. You can't quite convince yourself which is the right way around to do it. But that seems to be appropriate. Um, yeah, that's just a little bit strange, isn't it? Oh well, that's 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 novel. But that would completely wreck your ability to just to display it with your other. Eagle Moss ships, in a sense, because it's going to be horizontal, whereas all the others will be sort of vertically aligned. How bizarre. I'm going to have to go, out, go off and find out if other people have thought that as well, but it's not just me. But anyway, um, so that's, that's one of many for this evening. Um, I'll move on to the next one. Cheers for now.